You know, we've all seen parents behaving badly on the sidelines of a children's sporting event or behind the scenes maybe of a performance. Maybe you've even been an overenthusiastic, shall we call it, mom or dad who's gotten a little carried away in the moment. Well, today we're sharing expert strategies for sideline parents on the right way to push. Studio 5 relationship coach Dr. Matt Townsend is here with advice on how to be a good sport when you're the one cheering on from the sidelines. Yes. Gosh, we talk about this, I mean, it feels like season after season we have the viral video, oh, right, yeah. or the There's YouTube one, yeah. clip of some parent losing it and I'm kind of sick of the complaining like we know it's a problem right you're stepping forward today with some solutions do something do people. something and the big reason because it's making it not fun for the kids yeah. I I have had clients whose kids have been superstars they've been pushed to the limit and when the child is really about to break out in high school or is breaking out in high school to be a superstar they quit because dad mm or mom, but it's too much pressure and they're not doing it and they're not having fun anymore. Mm -hmm. So when they get to the age that they can, they sometimes sabotage it. So we gotta, we gotta be the good sport here. We gotta show them what sportsmanship looks like. And there's some really cool stuff that we will go through that's kind of cutting edge that I think if we just did one or two of these ideas, it'll change our lives. You suggest first a contract. Yeah. Why? Seriously, we have all these expectations around our kids playing sports. And then about halfway through, they all kind of go haywire, and now we're all mad at each other, and we don't have any clarity on what the expectation was. So what if we could sit down and make a contract, really a, and, a commitment contract to what we're committing to this year, and in the, each contract, identify what are some goals, let the child identify their goals. Mm -hmm. If they're really young, it might just simply be, I want to touch the ball, kick the ball five times during each game. Simple goals. Or it could be social goals. I want to meet more friends, or I want to not break down in the middle of every game <laughs> or whatever the goal may be and then you might anticipate I don't want you to have I don't want you to not uh, to throw a fit because you have to go to practice mm. so let's make an agreement that you won't throw a fit I'll get you there on time I'll make sure you have your clothes or your jersey and then we can sign it together and then I'd put it up in front like on the fridge and every time about once a week I would sit down and talk about how we're doing on our goals so and adjust it you've spelled out the standards yep. it's posted where everyone can see yeah. and that paper will keep you in Check throughout on the season. every sport and you probably don't want to overload it with a lot of stuff uh -huh. but the stuff that you know is going to happen I like that and get it in there and make a commitment and now what you're also teaching them is the importance of contracts and we're making a commitment because they know they've made a commitment to the team mm -hmm. but they haven't legalized in it anything and for these kids that are really into sports a contract's a big deal yeah. So yeah. we're going to start to monetize it because we pay a lot of money too to get these kids to do these things and um, it makes it a little more formal but it also makes it a place where we can put specific goals. Do parents need to be reminded that it's not about them? It's yeah and that's where you see the problem a lot of people are living vicariously through their child yeah. and the reality is the child's not there for you to live through. You were supposed to have your own life so one of the rules is put yourself in your child's shoes. Really, when you're on the sideline screaming and yelling, imagine what it's like to be them out on the field. I've heard of some kids that don't like their dad screaming at the referee, but I've also had kids that don't like their dad uh, cheering too many positive compliments to the other team. <laughs> like they're, they're the nice dad that's out there, oh. good tackle there, boy. <laughs> and they're like, oh, dad, yeah. you're so embarrassing. Yeah. So think about your child. What do they need? Do they embarrass easily? And really try to parent your child the way they need to be parented. Mm -hmm. And don't assume that child one is like child three or child four or five. As a new mom, I'm conscious and aware there's all this hype surrounding positivity, right? Yeah, sure. You want to be positive, but you don't want to over pour it on. No, so what's no. the balance there? Well, and remember, positivity we're finding out in positive psychology is the the way we actually create movement. So if you want to work on something, don't tell your child what they shouldn't do. Focus on what they're doing. So the more you see that they're doing what you want them to do, like if they hurry and get into the huddle, say, great job of getting in the huddle. Talk about the positive thing that they finally did instead of yelling at them for hours about how they never do anything positive. So when do you overdo it then? Well, the rule is simply this, and it's called the Lassonde line, and it's re there's a lot of great research on it in business and in marriage and relationships about you need a ratio of about one negative comment to five positive comments. So if you want the right to negatively or to give any negative feedback to somebody, you had to have invested five positive comments first. Anything you do below that, you have you will not have the buy-in, you will not have the energy. So if you're giving too many negatives to positives, then it's just not going to work. Another way to know is watch your kid. 
if you see your kid as a shrinking violet and just slowly disappearing as you're trying to engage them and motivate them, it's not working. So instead, maybe back off, go spend some time figuring out what it's like to be your child, identify how they react to things, and then find a better way to say it. What do kids really need from parents in the end? Love, L-O-V-E in the end. And what we do is we tend to try to critique them and give them feedback on their performance. And really what we should do is respond from love. I wouldn't say a thing, and I do all the time. I break my own rule all the time. But don't say anything unless it's coming from love. And don't pretend to say, well, of course I love him. That's why I'm critiquing him. I critique the people I love. Bull. What you ought to do first is shut your caker, go get the love in your heart, then when the love's in your heart, then teach whatever you want to teach. Because if a child knows he's loved unconditionally, that no matter what, you can come back to me, I'll accept you no matter what you do, I will always be here for you. Once they know that, then they're willing to listen. Until they have heard that, felt that, sensed that from you, nothing you say matters. I think, and this is years away for our family, but I think there's this fear out there that, gosh, if I let my kids pull back or if I let them miss an opportunity or even, heaven forbid, take yeah. a break from oh, a yeah. loved sport or a talent that we know they're good at or have show potential in, that they're going to be missing out. Yeah, see, that's called FOMO in our world, right? The fear of missing out. And the reality is kids don't miss out on stuff they like. So once you've had a teenager and they like going with friends, you know that that's the first thing they ask about every time. So what we're worried about is, and that makes sense if they have no passion. Mm -hmm. So you want to dial it in on their passion and then once you've connected to what they're passionate about, let them take breaks. And the research actually shows taking a break from something actually creates space for your body to actually learn, adapt and grow. And then when it goes back and engages the experience again, it engages it at a different level, but it actually takes it a deeper level. So, so breaks can be good. Breaks are good. But think about your kids studying. You don't want to just cram, 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 cram. Study, break, study, break, study, two day break. Those breaks actually make it so your, your learning goes deeper. Love this stuff. It's Very powerful. helpful again at the beginning of the season. So yeah. thank you so much. We're getting so excited around here. I know it's still a couple months it's away, like but November. we talk about it because it sells out your big yeah. date night. November on the 4th. It's, re it's really going to be an awesome topic too, because we're talking about how to bring happiness home how to actually be happy again. And what we're gonna teach you is once happiness is there, results are gonna come. We always think the results have to be there first, then the happiness comes. Just go to matttownsend.com or date nights with Matt. If you enter in Studio 5, you get a discount. Big discount. Get tickets now, because they fly. Fast. Thank yeah. you so much, Thanks, Brent. Brooke.